Hey yo, we're gonna do a kale pesto. Kale grows really well almost everywhere. It's a great, healthy, wonderfully healthy thing to grow. And a fun thing to make with it is pesto. It's kind of like an operation to make it work. So um, don't get mad at me, like there's a lot of steps, but totally worth it in the end and you can make it in larger quantities and you can do anything with it. It doesn't just have to go on pasta. You can put it on top of grilled meats. You can, you can slather it on a piece of pizza if you want to. You can mix it into oil and vinegar and, and dumb it down into a salad dressing. Uh, you can just smear it on crackers and then add a little, a little bit of like um, fresh mozzarella and a tomato. Like there's so many things you can do with kale pesto. So that's what we're doing today. Kale, yeah. Okay, garden kale, full of holes. Uh, doesn't mean it's any less edible or beautiful. So first step is I gotta wash this really good and then I gotta take it out and um, we'll remove the ribs. All right, the best way to tackle this recipe is to have um, a couple big bowls. First thing we do is we take out the ribs. Nice thing is here, you don't have to actually like physically cut the kale. You just wanna get rid of the tough, chewy ribs. Because even though we are gonna blanch the kale, and food process the kale. You don't want the kale to be chewy and horrible and have people sitting at your dinner table um, chewing like the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation turkey. At this point, I have also started on the stove a, um, a large pot of, of water to boil and I've added one tablespoon of kosher salt to that water. That's our blanching water. We're gonna blanch. If you have never blanched before, um, no, it is not Blanche Devereaux, my favorite golden girl. It is, uh, you quickly dunk, um, usually something green, into boiling water for about two or three minutes, depending on the texture of the thing, and then you remove it, drain it, and then quickly, as quickly as humanly possible, get it over ice, ice water and you cool it very quickly that way. And that is what helps to retain the beautiful green color. So that's what we're doing with the hot water. And I encourage starting the pot now because this takes a minute. It takes a while for water to boil, especially if you're just standing there waiting for it. Okay, these guys go in the compost bin could also save them for making vegetable stock later. All right, to the blanching water. I lied earlier, I said I'd already added this. I have not already added this. We add um, a tablespoon of salt, I'm using kosher salt. Um, this just gives the kale some initial flavor. Okay, this is a rolling boil. I've taken out the stems um, of the kale, but I haven't done much else. It's, I'm leaving it in sort of just whatever leaf form, because it doesn't matter. It's gonna get processed, All right? Get that in there, mash it down, get it under the nice hot water, and then you're gonna set the timer for three minutes and three minutes only. While this is going for three minutes, put ice in a really big bowl and get that ready for it to blanch when it comes out. Okay, so ice in a really big bowl. Add some water until you have a nice ice bath that you can, it's loose enough to fit um, the strainer with the kale. Okay, it's been three minutes. We're gonna drain this kale. Get it out of there. See, it wasn't in there for very long at all. One extra. And then immediately you wanna get it into the ice bath. See, it's kind of like surgery. Just stat. Ice bath, stat. Okay, I sorry. I pretend that what I do is as at all serious as what surgeons do. So that's rude of me. Pardon me for saying that. Okay, let it just chill. Okay, and if it's summer season or spring or fall or whatever is not like ice and snowy outside, um, you want this to drain. But then you can you can save this ice water and just pour it out in the garden. Don't just dump it down the drain. That would be. Silly. So what looked like a lot of kale has now turned into not very much kale, right? Cool. 
All right, and then our, um, our goal is literally just to squeeze as much water out of the kale as we can. Okay, so we take it after you've squeezed the majority of the stuff out there, we take it and we put it on a towel, like a clean kitchen towel, and then you just want to squeeze the rest of the, squeeze the rest of it out. You know, I usually just roll it up and squeeze it out. Okay, so now I've got my kale, which has been um, taking the ribs out. We have rinsed it. We have <laughs> blanched it. We have wrung it dry. And now it looks highly unpleasant. And again, this is one of those things, not everybody loves kale and it's because kale is unpleasant in general, like in most of its forms. However, when we are able to process it in a way um, that might take some time, anyway, it's delicious. I digress as usual. I am uh, zesting a lemon again. Boy, I feel like I do this at least once a day. And then you got to put in um, enough pepper to make yourself happy. A half a cup of pine nuts. Okay, we're also going to add about a cup of Parmesan cheese. Next up, three or four cloves of garlic. In this recipe on my website, I actually suggest blanching the garlic along with the kale to cut the bite of the garlic, especially for people who really don't enjoy um, a really garlicky flavor. But today I know that my audience is going to enjoy it, so I'm just gonna leave it raw. I'm not gonna blanch it. Okay, and then we need a whopping cup of extra virgin olive oil. Okay, and then um, I'm gonna start with a half teaspoon of salt. I can go up more if I need to, but I don't wanna over salt because you, can, you can't take salt away. And we're just gonna do it until it's done and it's very smooth um, and doesn't have any big chunks in it. Here we go, it's gonna be loud. Okay, at this point we taste and uh, decide if a half a teaspoon of salt was um, the desired amount or not. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? It's glossy, it's bright green. So let's taste it. Mmm, taste the pine nuts, taste the garlic, taste the lemon zest a little bit. Mmm, I'm gonna give it about an eighth of a teaspoon more of salt. All right, maybe not even, not even that much, okay. All right, there's the final product. Now, you can immediately slather this over hot pasta, or uh, aforementioned, put it pretty much on anything you want, grilled meats, whatever. You can also pop this in a freezer bag and stick in the freezer and thaw it out um, when you're ready to use it again. Just stick it in like a bowl of, stick the bag in a bowl of warm water for a little while and then just pour it over hot pasta at that point. Kale pesto. All right, uh, kale pesto, beautiful. Um, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to like it, please go ahead and do so below. Or also, um, if you're feeling the mood, just subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. Kale pesto, use it for everything. Find the recipe, though high maintenance, worth every moment on my blog at foodandbrief.com where I have a lot of easy, medium recipes, a couple hard ones, but it's mostly easy stuff, weeknight stuff um, for you. And hopefully it's easy to find. Have an excellent, peaceful day.